Hey everyone, it is Mary Hyatt and welcome to the Mary Hyatt Show. Oh my gosh, I am so excited you are here. I have a fabulous show planned for you today, one that is pretty near and dear to my heart, or in this case, my belly. And we're gonna get into all of the shame surrounding our belly as women and how we can start to understand what this area of our body represents, how powerful it is, and what we can do to begin to make peace with our belly because it just sucks walking around hating your belly and putting on the Spanx and all the things that we do to try to cover up our belly. So before we actually officially get into the content and start discussing this, let's officially start the show. And welcome to the Mary Hyatt Show. I'm so excited that you are here. And y'all, this is a juicy topic today. One that is truly uh, something that I have struggled with for so many years and just recently had a pretty profound experience with connecting back to my belly that I wanted to share with you guys. And it started me on this whole rabbit trail of understanding this area of our bodies, why there is so much collective shame for women when it relates to our stomach, our belly, our tummy, and why we are still operating out of a lot of disassociation from this area of our body, a lot of body shame, all the way to body hatred. And it just breaks my heart. I can't wait to get into what you guys have shared personally with me and just how impactful that has been. And a little bit later in the show, I'm gonna show you some practices that I think will be really supportive in your journey of making peace with your body and specifically today, making peace with your belly. But before we get into all of that, I wanna make sure that for those of you who aren't on my newsletter list and maybe this is your first time listening, I do this show every single week. It's also available as a podcast. So if you are watching the YouTube show, know that you can take me anywhere you go. You can listen to me in your car while you're working out, while you are picking the kids up from school, while you're on an airplane. I travel with you. So make sure that you subscribe to both my YouTube channel and however you are listening to music, make sure you subscribe on Google Play, SoundCloud, iTunes, whatever that might be. And if you are hanging out over on the podcast, if you're listening to me that way, I would love if you rated me five stars. And guys, I'm gonna ask, but would you just write me an awesome kick-ass review? I'm telling you what, this goes a long way for people just getting to know me and trying to figure out what the show is all about. And it's so helpful when they get to read comments and thoughts and praises from you guys on how you've resonated with the show, what you love about it, and how it has impacted your life. So give it a five-star rating, write a review. I would be ever so grateful, and that way I can continue showing up in your feed every single week. And share with your girlfriends. Y'all, we get into some raw topics about vulnerability, authenticity, what it means to be a woman, who is confident in her own skin, who is not afraid of pursuing her desire and pleasure and success and uh, just living fully alive. So I want more and more women to know about that. So share me with a girlfriend, that would be so awesome. Okay, so let's back up and let me kind of share with you my journey to making peace with my belly. So I was just talking with my personal trainer the other day. I was having to isolate some movement in my abs. And y'all know that I am a huge fan of an 
advocate of body positivity and health at every size and moving your body in a way that allows you to have vital health and energy. And so I love moving my body. And so I was isolating this area of my stomach. And so she was explaining to me, okay, we'll do this and then do that. Cause I was having a hard time doing the specific exercise and y'all, I, it was the b- most bizarre thing. I could not feel my stomach. It was like, I was so disassociated with that area of my body. It's like the best way I can to describe it is that it feels like there's this gigantic wall on my belly and I can't feel it. I can't feel the muscles. I can't tighten them. I can't release them. It's almost like I have all of this scar tissue around my stomach. And so I've been kind of going, all right, I know that there's something deeper here going on. So this past weekend, I had a really dear friend of mine who I've known for many, many, many years come and give me a massage. And I was explaining how I had this experience during my workout and how I know that I need to give some attention to my belly because I think I hold a lot of emotion there, but I was kind of unsure how to do that. And so she put her hand after I flipped over, you know, she put my hand, her hand on my belly and she put one hand on my heart and she does a lot of energy work as well. And she said, okay, just breathe into your belly. And the minute that I started to breathe into my belly, I cannot explain it, but I had this rush of fear, this rush of anxiety, and I started to cry. And I was having a really hard time getting my breath to go all the way down into my belly. I was breathing mostly out of my chest, out of my diaphragm, and I was having a hard time sending that breath down into my belly. And so she was so precious and she was like, it's okay, you know, let this come up, allow these emotions to come up, breathe with it, and just see if you can get that you know, belly, breath all the way down. So after a few minutes, I finally was able to sort of let the emotion, emotional wave pass and I was able to breathe into my belly. And so I was sitting there and she said, she knows me for a long time. And, um, I said, I feel like this is ancient. Like, I feel like this is so old. Like there is some old stuff here from my mother, from my grandmother. Like it feels generational to me. I used to have endometriosis, and so I felt like there was some scar tissue from that. Um, Several of you know my story, but several years ago, I, um, when I was married, I was a caretaker of my nephew who had neuroblastoma cancer and ended up passing away at the age of four. And it was very traumatic. It was earth shattering. I mean, there is not a day that I go through without thinking of him. And I've had to do a lot of work around that area of my body and just that motherly instinct, that nurturing part of myself and to heal that. And so it's like, I've done all this work and yet there is still this wave of fear. And so she said to me, she said, I know this is fear for you around not thinking you aren't able to have children and maybe that old fear that you don't want children because you're afraid that if you have children, they would die. And she said, I need you to say that out loud. I need you to say, I'm afraid that I can't have children. And I was bawling at this point, as you can imagine. And I was like, I can't, I can't say that. I cannot say that. And she said, if you don't voice it, it has power over you. And so finally, through her coaching and through a couple minutes of breathing, I was finally able to utter those words. And again, it was this huge release. And so I've been able now to really begin to connect with this part of my belly. And it got me thinking about our stomachs. It got me thinking about all of the trauma and the fear and the grief uh, that we house and store in our stomachs. And so it got me thinking about for me, living in a, um, in my past, living in a much larger body than I live in currently and thinking about the layers and layers of protection that my body put on to protect me from that trauma of my nephew passing and, um, an unstable kind of marriage. And it was like, I had immediately this deep appreciation for the intelligence of my body, that my body knew exactly how to protect myself with these layers of protection. And so I started talking to my trainer about that 
and we just started to talk about how much weight, you know, energetic weight and even physical weight that we carry around as women emotionally on our bodies and how brilliant and intelligent our bodies are to protect this area, you know, in, in, in the middle section of our body. And so then it kind of got me on this rabbit trail of, okay, there's all this emotional stuff that's stored in our stomach. And then as a society, there is this cultural shame. And you guys know what I'm talking about as women, that we have all of this pressure and expectation to have a tight stomach, a flat stomach, a toned stomach. I mean, think about it. You can't pick up any kind of health magazine without there being some sort of like blast your belly fat with these (laughs) five exercises on the cover. I mean, we are obsessed with this flat stomach and to the point where we vilify the stomach that is squishy and soft and rolly and jiggly. It's like, of course, as babies, you know, we see that as little babies and we're like, oh my God, they're so cute. And this is so healthy. And the fact that they're gaining weight, is such a positive thing. And it's, it's really beautiful to see a baby with all of their rolls, you know, it's just like that is a happy, happy baby. And then there's this point And I'm sure that you guys have a moment where somebody pointed at your stomach or poked your stomach or commented on your stomach that it was too big, or you just sort of got these cultural, even familial messages that said to be accepted, to be loved, it's best if you have a small stomach. And I kind of have my own conspiracy as why I think this is true. (laughs) I've done a lot of reading around this. I think it has a lot to do with this pressure um, as women to move away from our femininity as a society, um, making us more masculine, trying to kind of keep up and with equality, you know, we have to become more masculine. And so it's sort of a denial of our feminine, because if you think about historically, you know, Greek goddesses or Renaissance art or people that were, were considered healthy in every single tradition and era, it was people that had belly fat that was considered beautiful. Think about Renaissance paintings and the little cherub angels and things like that. This was celebrated. This was a a picture of beauty. And fast forward, it's the opposite, right? We don't see a lot of that. And there's, you know, even in the plus size community with women who are living in larger bodies, oftentimes it's, they still have these flat stomachs that obviously are in a larger size, but we don't show a lot of stretch marks or C-section scars or um, dimply skin or rolls. We don't get to see that in our mass media. And yet the vast majority of women don't have those kinds of stomachs that are portrayed in the media. And so to me, it's sort of this underlying message that our femininity is actually weak, that we need to toughen up. We need to be strong. We need to be hard. We need to have this sort of denial of our emotions, a denial of our intuition. And I'm like, why? I mean, to me, there's no bad way of having a stomach. I mean, if you naturally live in a thin body or if you naturally live in a larger body or wherever you are in your age, I mean, it's research that as you get older, you're going to develop more belly fat as your estrogen goes down. And so it's just really, to me, there's not a one size fits all. And yet we glorify this specific type of stomach, which is causing for those of us who don't look like that, myself included, y'all see my pictures. I mean, shame, like so much shame to the point where we, you know, take on this belief system that we are not lovable. We are somehow flawed. We aren't good enough. And we are constantly searching for this ideal stomach. So we, you know, do liposuction, all of the wraps, you know, the, the companies that, um, you know, shrink your stomach and, you know, 24 hours kind of thing. There's cleanses to shrink your belly fat, all the different exercises on magazines and workout routines to shrink the stomach, um, diet pills specifically related to the stomach. I mean, it's like, there's this obsession 
with the stomach. And of course, there's billions of dollars behind this industry. So of course, it really works for them, allowing us to believe that we need to have this unattainable kind of stomach. But to me, I'm like, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a way where we can truly anchor in to the beauty of our bellies and not in a superficial way, but like a true appreciation for our body. So on Instagram, I posted this question. I said, do y'all hate your stomachs? No matter what size you are, if you're size two, if you're size 24, do you hate your stomach? And have you tried or wanted to try surgery, diets, cleanses, wraps, spanks, you know, you name it. Have y'all tried this? So I had to share some of these responses because I was flooded. My inbox was flooded with people sharing their belly stories with me. And it was honestly, it was heartbreaking. Like I just stood and, you know, bore witness to the, the, just traumatic stories that people had related to their self image and their belly. So I want to share some of these with you to sort of normalize that this is the conversation happening below what's being showed in the mass media, below the movies, below the social media, below the modeling beauty diet industry. This is how most of us feel just so that you know, you're not alone. Just, just normalize it. So one girl said, um, Hey, love, wanted to share my tummy thoughts. I'm really struggling with mine. All while I was growing up, my grandma would say that you know you're too fat if your stomach goes past your boobs. It was such a specific measurement and it really stuck in my head. Sometimes mine bloats and sticks out past my boobs and I can hear her in the back of my head saying, and it all, and it echoes all day. I try to stay body positive, but my stomach is definitely the part of my body I struggle most to love. In all honesty, I would like it to be smaller, flatter, and more muscular. Another one of my followers, she said, I've considered a surgery, but the cost. I wear Spanx when we have events and dinners. I've done workouts and can just feel it and get super discouraged. Another woman said, I have sagging skin from four pregnancies in six years. Lots and lots of deep stretch marks. My belly hangs over my jeans and anything with a waistline. I honestly say it jokingly, but I'm serious when I say I wish I had a knife and could just cut off all the fat and skin of myself. Just being real with you. No judgment. This is how I feel about me. People were preached to thank it for its uh, growing four beautiful and healthy babies, but I still can't look at it without shame few more stories I wanted to share with you. Somebody said, yes, I hate my stomach. I went from being fit and lean to having so much extra weight in my midsection after having my daughter. I'll be honest, despite looking in the mirror, I get asked all the time if I'm pregnant, though it's no one's business. I had a miscarriage back in November, so it hurts even more to be asked this. I even went from getting over 10 to 20 compliments from so many people a day on how amazing my body looked to less than five a month, not exaggerating at all but it makes me even more self-conscious. I hate being this open about it, but I guess it's time for people to know how much their reaction to lack of reaction actually affects others. Another woman said, I feel so torn. I don't hate it because it looks like it does because I have kids that I love, totally worth the trade-off. But my fear is that no man will ever be able to love me because of my stomach. That's so dumb. She had little cry face emojis. (laughs) And then the last one I wanna share with you says, Yep, it's always been the area I feel body shame. If I have extra skin, fat, wrinkles, it's not good enough. It's never been good enough. Even when I was 16, it had no extra fat. I didn't have the super defined six pack abs. Therefore, it wasn't good enough. Being fit and strong equals worthiness for me. It was definitely ingrained from years of ballet and constant comparison, but it's also a strong value in my family. So how many of y'all can relate to that? Whether you have children or not, I mean, that's like the real truth of what we experience as women, that deep shame, that deep, deep shame. And And it really does break my heart. I mean, it's sobering, you know, and I hope that if there's any men who are listening to this, just to hold space for these stories, you know, and I didn't share anybody's names with you guys. And this is anonymous, of course. Um, but I feel like so many of us want to connect in this area to say like, me too. Like I'm ashamed of my belly. I hate my belly. I 
am afraid that I won't be loved. You know, people also responded. I kind of had like a poll and people gave me really short, quick answers. And some of them said, I hate my C-section scars. I'm definitely afraid to wear a two piece. I never wear form fitting clothes. I'm always trying to hide it or trick others into thinking I'm smaller. I'm uncomfortable with mine. I wish it were smaller. I live in Spanx. If it was flatter, then I would have a boyfriend. Then I would be pretty. And so as we bring light to this, as we bring awareness to this, my hope is that we can begin to shift this story of shame because it's not innate. You know, if you think about when we were born as little babies, we didn't grow up hating our stomach or judging our roles at all. You know, we, we delighted in our bodies. It's something that we have learned to be ashamed of our bodies. We have to create a new narrative for our bellies. So let's just kind of pause and think about this area, the the belly itself and what it represents energetically, because I think we'll start to understand why it feels so vulnerable, why we're so susceptible to shame, why we are in a state sometimes of protection um, and adding on layers of fat to protect ourselves, which is just so amazing to me that our bodies are capable of doing this. So the stomach, think about this. This is your center of intuition. This is your emotional center. This is known by scientists as your second brain. It houses more serotonin than your actual brain itself. If you think about it from sort of a um, more esoteric kind of idea, uh, it's our center of femininity. You know, our uterus is there. Our ovaries are there. We grow children there. A lot of our mother issues reside there. It's where we sort of sense our nurturing self. There is oftentimes a lot of trauma that is stored within the stomach, a lot of physical pain. If you have a chronic illness like Crohn's or if you've had a C-section or had any kind of surgeries within the stomach, there's a lot of um, actual, you know, physical trauma that has happened within the stomach, it's very vulnerable. It protects all of our vital organs, our intestines and our spleen and our liver. And I mean, it's like, it's the only thing between essentially death, you know, it's like all of this, this wall of our stomach. And it is to me this layer of protection. You know, when you think about weight specifically in that area, emotionally, it's those, it's that layer of protection. It's we are emotionally carrying our fears, our grief, our traumas within the belly. And so as women, we sort of form this level of scar tissue, and I say that kind of metaphorically, um, or fat cells, you know, more actual, you know, actually that we're doing this, uh, to protect ourselves against that vulnerability. And otherwise it feels too open. It makes us susceptible to pain or to hurt or to abuse. And so subconsciously, you know, we're trying to protect ourselves. We're trying to cover that up. And so as we're on this journey of loving and accepting ourselves more, as the women that we are today, it begins with sort of understanding this area so that we can see how uh, just amazingly integrate, in, in, integrate, <laughs> intricate uh, this area is and how um, much is happening in that area so we can begin to have a level of respect and appreciation. And so in Chinese medicine, uh, the stomach is the source of the qi where our spiritual energy meets our physical body. In the Hindu philosophy, the stomach is the seat of the soul. For Buddhists, the laughing Buddha's big stomach symbolizes fortune and happiness. So our stomach is the source of our life energy, our well-being, but also of our emotions. And that's a quote from Constance um, Kalar. And I think that that's really helpful to understand that the stomach is an energy center. In Eastern philosophy, it's known as the second chakra, the second energy center of the seven energy centers that are within your body. And I am a certified yoga and teacher, and I do a lot of work around energy healing and energy work. And so I'm always working on balancing out these energy centers in my body. And this area, the second chakra, the sacral chakra, um, 
is really important to understand. So this is kind of the center for movement, for sensation, for emotions, for sexuality, for desire, for need, for pleasure, for femininity, it's your center of creativity, any kind of mother issues that you might be having, it's sort of the center of fear and the center of grief. And so when this area is balanced emotionally, um, you are able to move gracefully you are able to have a emotional intelligence. Your empathy is cultivated. You have compassion towards others. You're able to process and um, manage your emotional state. There is a deep sense of trust with yourself. There is a deep sense of connectedness to your intuition. You know, that gut feeling like, ooh, I don't like that, or that doesn't feel right, or yes, I'm getting a total yes for my stomach. Um, when this is balanced, you are able to have this sense of nurturance for yourself and for others. You're able to adapt easily to change. You're flexible. You are creative. You are tapped into your pleasure. Um, desire is on board. You are sexually connected, um, and you have healthy boundaries. And so I love this book called Eastern Mind, Western Body, and it goes into immense depth into this. But it says, a balanced second chakra has the capacity for sexual satisfaction, physical pleasure, general enjoyment of life, comfort with intimacy, and the ability to accept movement and change gracefully, including graceful physical movements. There is a steadiness and clarity in emotional states. One can feel deeply without excessive histrionics. Balance involved the ability to nurture self and others while still maintaining healthy sexual and emotional boundaries. So that kind of gives you a little bit of idea of like, what does this look like when this center is balanced? Now, on the flip side, when your second chakra, the stomach center, energy center is out of balance, you're going to have rigidity in your body and your attitude. So fear of moving the body, difficulty moving the body. You might have frigidity, fear of sex, hard time connecting sexually, fear of showing your body. Um, you might have poor social skills, denial of pleasure, denial of needs, excessive enmeshment or taking care of other people's needs, um, excessive boundaries, like if you have a lot of fear there, fear of change, lack of passion, lack of excitement, lack of desire, lack of creativity. And physically, the imbalance is gonna show up, if you think about this area of the body, in your reproductive organs, in your spleen, in your urinary system, menstrual difficulties, sexual dysfunctions, lower back pain, knee trouble, lack of flexibility, deadened senses, loss of appetite for food, sex, and life. So what causes this kind of imbalance? Oftentimes it comes from abuse, it comes from trauma, it comes from, um, and I guess what I should say, when I say trauma too, I don't necessarily even mean um, in therapeutic terms like big T, Trauma, I could mean little t, trauma, meaning capital T, something that is really um, intense like sexual abuse, um, physical abuse, um, uh, emotional abuse, being part of an alcoholic family, like that's gonna be those big T traumas. But there's a lot that gets stored within the belly for little T traumas, lowercase t traumas, like volatile situations, rejection, coldness, death, grief, um, neglect, uh, denial of a child's needs, like when you were little, emotional manipulation, religious severity, um, generational stuff from your parents not working through their sexual issues. I mean, it can be a lot of issues that get stored in this area. Anything that's emotional essentially is going to be in this area of your body. So that's the kind of, you know, trauma or abuse. We talked about illness, right? And different surgeries and the, the trauma that happens from that. So any kind of physical, emotional trauma or abuse, big T or little T, is going to show up here in that center. And so as you're sort of bringing a new awareness to this area of your body, kind of just take a moment and check in with yourself. Do you feel connected to your stomach? Can you feel it? Can you feel the muscles within your stomach? 
Do you trust your intuition? Do you have any of these kind of imbalances that I talked about physically or emotionally? And I kind of think a beautiful deep question to ask yourself is, what have you been holding in your belly? What emotional pain have you been protecting yourself from? What hurt is stored there? What fear? You know, what is asking for some loving attention? Because my guess, no matter what your belly looks like, and I think those of us who've lived in larger bodies oftentimes um, get accused of not taking care of ourselves or something happening. And there's a lot of ties to sexual abuse and larger tummies. But those people who are living in the little, you know, smaller bodies can have the same amount of trauma. And maybe it doesn't show up as belly fat or something like that. But oftentimes the flip side of the obsession of trying to make their bellies smaller, um, there, there, can, there can be a lot that shows up even for smaller bodies in the form of these physical imbalances, whether that's hormonal or like we talked about the back pain and the um, different disorders in the reproductive organs. It doesn't always have to show up as um, you know a layer of protection, but it can also be just a disassociation of the body. I can't feel my stomach. I don't want people to touch my stomach. I don't want people to see my stomach. So we have a lot of different elements, and this is why I wanted to talk about it because it's weighted. You know, it's it's this cultural shame and expectation that we're supposed to have a flat stomach. There's trauma related to this area of the body. It's a very vulnerable area of the body. Symbolically, it represents our just deepest archetype of femininity and creativity. So it's layered. It's layered for us. And so hopefully this can kind of bring some awareness. If you're having some shame, if you're having, like I was having disassociation from the body, like I could not feel it, like it felt numb to me. I couldn't breathe into my belly. It was like, okay, what am I holding? What am I holding in my belly? What is being stored there that I haven't processed, that I haven't healed, that I haven't dealt with? And be willing to explore that. Be willing to explore that because when this is balanced, you are able to be truly in that feminine energy. You know, you're connected to your body. You're connected to your sexuality. You're connected to your emotions. You're connected to your intuition. It's sort of like, let's bring this part of our bodies back online because the gifts and the intelligence that this area of our body has to offer us are immense. And when we're integrated, and connected to this part of our bodies. Oh my gosh, like it's our it's our superpower, y'all. This is our feminine super freaking power. It is absolutely amazing. So let's figure out how we can begin to move and break up some of that stagnant, stuck, blocked energy in this center, bring our bellies back online, release this cultural shame, and begin to make peace with our belly. So I want to share with you four practices on how to actually make peace with your belly. And these are really practical. These are things that I practice every day, the things that I would suggest that you practice every day. And it may feel a little silly. These may feel a little weird. These may feel foreign because when you've lived in a state of being disconnected from your body, it's, it's going to be foreign. However, my encouragement is that you at least try one of these practices and see how it shifts. And I will say that through this journey, be gentle with yourself. This has taken me a few years to get to the place where I can post a st- picture of my stomach or wear a bikini. I mean, this is like five or six years <laughs> of work in the making of figuring out the layers of trauma and emotional stuff that's going on within my belly. So be gentle through this process. I know that for me, when I started doing some of these practices, they were very emotional for me. Our sometimes immediate response when we're dealing with the belly because of its vulnerability, we will want to sort of have that fight or flight response and ultimately we freeze. And so for me, I had to be really gentle, really kind, like 
allow the emotions to come up. Even like the other day when my massage therapist friend was over, I had to allow this wave of massive fear to come up and eventually it dissipated as I breathed with these emotions. But it's like a lot is stored there. So as we move it, as we break it up, I just kind of want to give you like, don't be surprised if some emotions come up. Don't be surprised if you cry and you don't even know what you're crying about. Don't be surprised if you get angry and you have no idea what you're angry about. I mean, you've stored some deep stuff within your belly that is probably not even true in this moment, what you might be feeling now. It could be from 10 years ago or when you were a baby or a child or whatever. So I offer just sort of a, 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 a encouragement of compassion and tenderness as you walk through these practices. And then the second piece of that is also to have fun with these. So as I go through these four practices, just try them on, have fun, laugh, you know, make light of it. You know, we are so fearful oftentimes of our belly and we oftentimes only have offered it judgment and criticism and shame that the idea of sort of laughing with it or feeling it feels kind of silly and foreign. So make light of it, enjoy it, play, like, you know, make yourself in a, you know, do these practices in a safe environment, but make yourself kind of childlike and curious and just sort of see what happens, see if you can smile, see if you can laugh, bring some light into that belly. Okay, so the first practice, practice number one, is really simple, and this is simply to breathe into the belly. This is how we begin to turn on the nerve endings in the belly. You know, so you think of all the tissues, all the nerves that are inside of the belly, bringing the breath, it's almost like we are waking up this part of our body, this taking our breath and drawing it down deep into the belly, using this pranic life force, our breath, moving that energy into the body, restoring the flow. You think about breath and you think about the rhythm and movement of breath, bringing the flow back into the stomach, into the body so that when you breathe, it doesn't get caught in your chest or caught um, in your ribs, but you, you send that breath all the way down. And again, offering yourself a lot of gentleness as these emotions come up and you ride the wave of what, it, what is happening. And I recorded a guided meditation for you guys that I'm going to make available as a separate podcast. So when I complete this and get this up and going, you'll also have access to that. So it's going to help you breathe into the belly, but simply just lying on your back and breathing all the way down, taking a full deep inhale through the nose, all the way down into your belly is really powerful. And my encouragement to you in this moment, wherever you're listening to this or watching this, go ahead and relax your stomach for a second. Like let it go. We hold our stomachs in, it's chronic. We don't even realize that we're doing it. Somewhere along the way we've been taught this. And again, it's a form of protection. Um, let that go. So just see here for a moment if you can release the tension in the belly, and oftentimes because we're so not used to this, it can actually kind of hurt, like it doesn't feel great when we release the holding of our bellies. But this is really powerful to be able to connect your breath. The, the belly needs to sort of be in a state of fluidity and relaxation. And so let go of the tension in the belly. And I like for belly breathing to be an exhale through the mouth if possible. So if we inhale through the nose, allowing the lungs to fully expand with air so it pushes our belly out. And then as we exhale, <sighs> allow the belly to collapse and the navel point, that belly button, is gonna collapse into the spine. So when we know we're breathing into the belly, it's gonna feel free, it's gonna feel fluid, it's not gonna feel stuck, and it's gonna move the belly up and down. So as we inhale and fill the lungs up with air, our belly should be rising and falling with the inhale and the exhale. And so it really is a beautiful practice to breathe into the belly. Just this alone, if this is all you did, it will transform your relationship to your body and to your, into your belly and to your life. It is powerful. Just taking as often as possible a few deep breaths into this belly and being patient if it gets stuck 
trying again and just sort of imagining, okay, all the way down, all the way down and releasing it all the way out. So breathe into the belly. This will begin to help you make peace with the belly. Now the second practice, this is a really fun one. This is to move the belly, to shake the belly. I had a friend of mine suggest this to me a couple years ago, and this is something that I do now in the shower. And again, because we are afraid to jiggle, we do not allow our bodies to move. And this is part of the imbalance of this chakra. And so my second practice for you is to move your belly, to shake your belly. So if this is my belly. And for those of you who are listening to the podcast, you can't exactly see me do this. Um, but if you're on YouTube, basically you're just taking your hands and you're just vigorously moving them up and down. So you're essentially shaking all of your fat. And it's just like jiggle, 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 up and down, up and down, up and down, jiggle, 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 all the way to your hips, all the way to the other side of the hips, to the belly, to the stomach. And you're just going to jiggle that area of your body because this area is usually so disconnected from feeling and we don't move it. This is a way for you to make contact with your belly. This is a way for you to bring peace back into the belly because of all the years of abuse external and personal, we have to break up this energetic scar tissue. It's almost like it's, you know, blocked in this area. And so if you move your body, move your hips, think about belly dancing. Okay. If you think about what belly dancers do, they're moving their hips side to side. I oftentimes I'll think of myself moving in a figure eight. I really like that motion. And I usually do this in the shower because it's nice to do it naked because you don't really I mean, you can do it with your clothes on, but there's something really freeing about doing it where there's no kind of fabric holding your stomach in. You're just free. And oftentimes in the shower, there's nobody else in there with you. And so it's a nice, beautiful private space for you to do this without anybody knowing. Um, but it's sort of a way for us to signal to ourselves, like, I'm willing to see you, belly. It's okay that you're here, belly. I acknowledge your presence, belly. I release the need to numb or hide or cover up. You know, in essence, moving the belly gives yourself permission to take up space. It's that somatic healing process to bring us closer to peace and uh, balance. So do some shaking of the belly, you know, bounce your body up and down to some music. You can kind of dance and do it that way. You can do these, you know, figure eight circles, however you want to do it, just move and shake the belly. All right. Practice number three. This is more of a, an emotional practice that's really healing. And this is to offer forgiveness and gratitude to your belly. This is a practice that my coach had me do um, probably about four years ago as I started this journey. And so what you're gonna do is in the evening, you're gonna lay your hands on your tummy, so you're just kind of laying flat on your bed. And this is a, kind of like a little bit of a meditation, and I include this piece in the guided meditation that um, I've offered for you to access, so you can kind of do these all a little bit together. Um, but you're gonna repeat these four phrases. You're gonna to touch your stomach. Healings touch the stomach. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. And this comes from the Ho'oponono um, meditation tradition that is supposed to be incredibly healing. And so it's just these four phrases. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. It's just acknowledging the years of judgment and criticism and abuse that you have given your belly and you're sort of asking forgiveness. It's when you think about your, your belly and you're offering gratitude like that, thank you. Um, you're thanking your belly for its incredible intelligence, for the way that it has protected you over all these years, the way that it has processed maybe some emotions that you haven't been able to consciously process. So it's asking forgiveness and then it's offering that gratitude, like thank you. Thank you for the way that you have housed all these emotions and that you've kept me safe. It goes deeper to me than that, the, the kind of tiger stripes, like, you know, stretch marks, like I've got tiger stripes. It goes deeper than that to me. Um, and that's fine, but it's recognizing how loving 
and how compassionate our bellies are and how they have been acting as our ally, as our friend, as our partner this entire time, whether it was birthing a child or holding trauma. I mean, our bodies have partnered with us on our team. They're not against us. They've been our advocate this entire time. They're storing the stress and this emotional trauma um, that we couldn't consciously carry. So just thinking it. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. All right. So the last practice is to touch the belly. So this is something that you can do after you've shaken your body, after you've danced with your body, you've moved your body. When you get out of the shower, touch your belly. And this isn't, you know, anything weird. It's like, How often do we, um, you know, we lotion our body, right? We lotion our arms, we lotion our our legs, our our shoulders, our face. And for whatever reason, there's a lot of fear around touching the belly. I mean, it's an area in massage um, that, that is avoided. So our bellies don't get a lot of physical touch. So my encouragement as a fourth practice is when you are lotioning your body in the morning, touch it, massage the belly, you know, stimulate those nerve endings. You can also dry brush your belly. I do a lot of that, um, exfoliating the belly, touch the belly. Get your hands on your belly. You know, as you lovingly touch and you do the practice of forgiveness and gratitude, you know, in addition to that, you know, in the morning as a practice of self-care, you know, you're going to want to touch the body to make it not a foreign, scary, shameful place, but that we offer it love by just giving it what it needs, moisture, exfoliation. So touching the body. So first practice is to breathe into the belly. Second is to move and to shake the belly. Third is to offer forgiveness and gratitude, and lastly, to touch the belly. And, you know, my hope is that you can release this shame that you have around your belly to challenge all of the different cultural messages uh, that is telling you that your body and your belly isn't lovable, the voices that shame jiggly stomachs or stomachs with scars or stomachs with rolls or dimply stomachs, stomachs that essentially are anything different than what we think that they should be, and redefine what is beautiful and sacred, deepening this level of appreciation for our bellies, this deep appreciation of our femininity, this just natural way that our bodies were created as feminine wonderful, lovely beings and tuning into that area of our body so that we can be connected to our intuition, so that we can experience pleasure, so that we can digest life, that we can feel our our feelings, we can have healthy boundaries, that we can tap into our creativity and trust our gut and really befriend our belly. There is no wrong way to have a belly. Now, as you practice these four practices, I promise they will really help you to integrate what's going on and begin to deepen that acceptance and ultimately offer peace in your relationship with your belly. So y'all, thank you so much for being open and willing to receive this new awareness and to start asking yourself some of these questions and getting curious about your relationship with your belly to see where you might extend a little bit of openness to that relationship. So I will see you guys next week, of course. And as I end every show, the purpose of life is to be grateful, to be great and to be full. I'll see y'all next week. Bye.